Hey everyone, welcome back to Sex Skin Spirit. Today I have a special episode. I'm going to be interviewing Natalie Hepper from the Red Tent program. And so I'm just going to read you guys a little bit from her website so you can get an idea of who she is. So Natalie has a degree in psychology and she is a certified stress coach and a rapid transformational therapy practitioner. She's trained under world-renowned therapist, author, and speaker Marissa Peer. She's helped hundreds of people, including me, all over the world to help heal deep trauma, find freedom from limiting negative belief patterns, and step into their authentic selves to live the lives that they really deserve. So Natalie, thank you so much for coming. Thank you for having me, Natalie. <laughs> I think it's intro. awesome. My very yeah, own great. intro from my own website. <laughs> but that, that is, that, that's a good explanation, more or less. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so yeah. I just, I kind of want you to say it in your words, too, if you can kind of just share, because it's been a minute, I think I, I purchased her course uh, about a year ago, so kind of your evolution and where, how you would describe yourself now in this moment. So I, I guess I would have considered myself to have suffered with that for around about a decade. I haven't had anything like that for around four years because of rapid transformational therapy and metacognitive psychology, I think those two things combined changed my brain um, and my heart. <laughs> I don't know where in me the shifts took place, but throughout, you know, in my soul, I don't know how, you know, you've been through something similar because what I put together in the Whole Healed Woman program that you've experienced is my journey condensed. Um, so I have the Red Tent program and Whole Healed Woman. So the Red Tent is the one-to-one -one experience that also has group, a group um, coaching element and online lessons. And Whole Healed Woman is the purely um, self-guided course that you do. Um, so yes, that's a little bit about me. I live in Copenhagen. I have four kids from the age of six to 20 and um, and I'm married to a doctor, which is always fun um, because we have very, he loves what I do. And he always says, you know, with the work that I'm doing, thank goodness, because there's so much that doctors can't do um, when it's, when it's a mind body issue. It's, um, it's not something that they can really fix apart from just treating with band-aid type um, things like medication and that are not curing anything, but just managing symptoms. Um, yeah. The work that that I'm doing with with this disorder and with many other things like phobias and addictions and depression, anxiety, is getting to the root cause of it all and healing it at the subconscious level. Um, yes, so kind of like you're doing brain surgery. <laughs> yeah, without, without a scalpel. scalpel. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, brain and heart surgery. I do, it does, some people say, a client said that to me once, she said, I feel like I just had heart surgery. Um, yeah. And it is, it is like that. It's like something, it's spiritual brain surgery, spiritual heart surgery, yeah. Yeah, and it, and it really is, I can say from experience, like quick results. <laughs> like doing, I did the Whole Healed Woman program, which is the, the self-guided and just knowing I can go back to those sessions too yeah uh, a year later which was kind of why I wanted to reach out to you I actually emailed you and a minute later as I'm typing the email I get an email from you that says hey I saw you purchase this a year ago how are you feeling so it was huh. very like synchronistic yeah yeah interesting but I was going back to that one of the sessions that you had from a whole healed woman and just working on continuing to heal my womb and to repair my cells and I was like, this is amazing. So coming back to it after going through all that healing has been really cool to experience as well. Yeah. But I kind of wanted to share too, for those who don't know, can you kind of tell a little bit about what PMD is and kind of what the symptoms of that are? Yeah. So PMDD stands for premenstrual dysphoric disorder. So dysphoria is like the opposite of euphoria. <laughs> It's a, if euphoria is up here, dysphoria is down here. Um, it affects around about one in twenty women. It's probably more because I think a lot of a lot of and it's not just women, of course, menstruators in general. It affects um, probably more, but they've gone undiagnosed. So um, the other 
thing about it is that around 15 to 30% attempt suicide at some point. So it's quite dangerous in that respect because it really does. It's like Jekyll and Hyde. You don't recognize yourself. Um, so here are the symptoms. So if you're listening to this and you feel like this sounds like me, or, you know, I just thought it was really bad PMS or thought it was just my hormones. This is the, this is the list. Mood swings, um, irritability or anger, increased interpersonal conflicts, like making huge mountains out of molehills, um, stuff that when your period comes within a couple of days, you just cannot even relate to what you were thinking before. Um, depressed mood, feelings of hopelessness, self-deprecating thoughts, really getting down on yourself, um, a lot of tearfulness, crying generally, anxiety, tension, feelings of being on edge. By the way, it's not all of these. You just need to have, I think, you know, five of these and you'd be considered and you could get the diagnosis. Um, decreased interest in usual activities, difficulty concentrating, marked lack of energy hypersomnia or insomnia, sense of being overwhelmed or out of control. And this is all premenstrual. And then as soon as the period arrives, you're back again. And it's very confusing because you feel like, what's wrong with me? Do I need treatment? No, I'm fine now. And it's just, it's back and forth. And you can start to think, am I bipolar? What's wrong? Um, so it's like this, yeah, Jekyll and Hyde, like I said, it feels like you're kind of possessed by some dark, depressed spirit. And it can build like a tsunami and then just come crashing down, um, usually in a very dramatic, damaging outburst, which is followed by feelings of guilt and worthlessness and, you know, what's wrong with me and why are you with me? If you were the partner, you just think, just leave me. I'd leave me if I could, but I can't so just go. Like these are the sorts of things that, that you feel, that I used to feel. Um, and it feels totally justified at the time is the other thing. You, someone could say, it's just your hormones. You're, you just, you've got to wait a few days. Like, no, 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 and you won't let it go. Um, it just completely hijacks your mind and warps the way that you see things. And really what's going on is it's the emotional pain inside of you, which I call the box of pain. And it remains shut most of the time, but premenstrually it's like this box opens up. It's like the hormones have the key to open up the box of pain. And it just, floods you and it's like you get this veil over your eyes that changes everything um and it warps the way you see things it's like the pain wants to prove itself to be true and it twists whatever is happening in your life to make it fit that pain so if your husband's late and he doesn't text you oh that must be because he's lying and he doesn't want to spend time with you the kids have left things in a mess, oh, that's because nobody respects me. So you can, the pain is there, whatever the belief is, will find proof of itself. And it's like this tunnel vision, and you can't see it any other way. It's, no, it must be true. Um, so what I always, where I always would begin with a client is to look for these triggers. And the most powerful question you can ever ask yourself really is what story am I telling myself about this? What am I making it mean? Because what you're making it mean is what you actually believe at the subconscious level. So we form the beliefs between zero and seven. And then the beliefs give us thoughts and then feelings and then, they can, and then actions. So then it sort of gets the other way around where someone's actions will give you a feeling that will confirm the belief and it becomes a big looping situation so when we change the subconscious mind then everything changes but I know I'm getting ahead of myself I'm rambling a bit now but jump in with any questions as I'm talking no that was great I feel like that really <laughs> kind of explains is that's that's the place the exact place that I was in when I reached out to you you know I was mm -hmm. feeling just like you said, the wave of, I feel amazing. Okay, now I feel horrible. And I don't even know what my personality is anymore. Just yeah. losing touch with 
like my hobbies and my passions, not even able to identify what is it that I even like. And then as soon as it's over, oh, I feel great now. I feel like Natalie again. Yeah. So, and not being able to trust yourself either, you know. Yeah. You, you, you're sure you're thinking, no, I've got to leave this relationship. No, it's not right for me or whatever else. I've got to leave this mm -hmm. job or, you know, my friends, I don't even like them or I don't even have any friends. You tell yourself all this stuff. <laughs> But then you know, can is this right? Can I trust this? And and no, you can't actually. Um, yeah. Don't ever make a decision. It's a magnified. Um, it's magnified. It's mm -hmm. like a stone in your shoe, and it's all you can feel. It's but it's not actually. Um, it's not the truth in the grand scheme of things. Yeah. Right. So. Yeah. And to me, I would call that from a spiritual perspective, like the ego. Like our, mm. our ego has shaped around our experiences and we've kind of built these, created these beliefs. And like you said, we, we write a story and a narrative. So mm. if we experience anything during that time, it's, oh, that must be because they hate me. Oh, that must be because nobody loves me. And it, it just goes from one end all the way to the extreme when you're in your cycle and you're, you're about to flow. It's like, you can't take things from a logical perspective, it's very emotional and very reactive. Yeah. And, and I love to, in the beginning of the course, you said something about like not identifying, like recognizing that you do have these symptoms, but also not attaching PMDD as another label or story. So can you yeah. talk a little bit about that too? Yeah. Um, there's a few things that I always try to nip in the bud with people right away is the first, one of the rules of the mind is that anything you put my in front of becomes part of your identity. So don't call it my PMDD, my anxiety, my depression, um, because it's, it's, you, you'll find it difficult to get rid of. You'll identify with that as part of who you are. Um, so that's the first thing. And then I think what I teach in the program is that you're not your thoughts. You're the one that watches them. Um, so whatever's going by, you're able to sit back here and say, yep, there's a thought, but I don't have to think it. I don't have to engage with it. I don't have to make a train of thought out of it. Um, so the first step in Whole Healed Woman and in the Red Tent is getting this distance, um, being able to sit in presence and see thoughts as just like clouds passing by. They're not as important as we make them. Every feeling we have doesn't have to be explored. <laughs> you can, and thoughts follow, feelings follow thoughts. That's another thing I learned. The, the only reason I'm having the feeling is because I've thought something. And is that thought even true? You know, if I had the thought, oh, he doesn't care about me. He's not considering me. Of course, that's painful to think that your primary bond doesn't care about you or isn't thinking or considering you, thinking about you or considering you. So you're gonna have an emotional response. And then because you have this feeling, you think, oh, the feeling's real. And you know, I have to honor my feelings and all this other stuff that we learn, which is great, but not when the feeling has come as being stoked and created from a false thought. Mm -hmm. So the first step is to question that thinking saying, wait a minute, what story am I telling myself about this? Oh, he doesn't care about me. Is that true? And the second I ask that question, I go, how ridiculous. Of course he cares about me. And if you, and then Byron Katie does this in, in the work, she'll say, is this true? And if you can say, yeah, it is true. Yeah, he'd obviously, he's not considering me. Obviously it's a red flag for irrational thinking as well. If you ever hear yourself <laughs> use that word. Obviously, well, clearly. Um, then the next question to ask is, can you be absolutely certain that that's true? And by that, it's that second question, you really can't. I cannot be absolutely certain that he doesn't care about me. Um, so that's, yeah, that's part of the, the beginning of the work that we do before we move on to the deeper stuff, getting to the root cause of things with the subconscious. So, I think the this training in the beginning, this um, metacognitive psychology, is like making you a very good surfer of any waves that come, because you're able to pivot and you know, no, I don't have to believe that thought, and I can question that one, I can let that thought go, I can 
come back to presence and right here in the present moment, actually everything's fine. And that's all well and good until a tsunami comes, which is why we need to do the rapid transformational therapy to reduce those tsunamis, those floods of emotion down to something surfable, which is what we do. Yeah. 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 I like to say that you can only do so much work with the conscious mind because it's almost like there's a wall and you're kind of up against that wall. And until you, you can get your brain into those different states of consciousness to really kind of permeate through that. That's mm-hmm. where I see like the real healing, because like you said, from ages zero to seven, you're a sponge. So every single experience is being buried deeply into your brain. And until mm-hmm. we can really get to that, like that root cause, like for me, that, that changed everything. I mean, after doing the work, I had memories surfacing that I didn't even know these things had happened. And Mm. when they surfaced, it was like, wow, like that makes so much sense. That's why I do this. That's why I'm afraid of this. And just connecting those dots too was really, it was really powerful. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah, Some clients go all the way back to the womb with this work or to being a baby um, alone in their cot crying making these interpretations of the events. And this is another important thing to to understand. It isn't what's happened to you that has created the trauma. It's what you started to believe about yourself as a result of the event that's still stuck. Because the event's long gone, whatever it was. And the event to your adult mind, you might even remember it and go, well, it wasn't that bad. Yeah, I got lost in the shopping center for 10 minutes, big deal. Or I couldn't spell the word right and I was, you know, and I went and sat down again. Because with your adult mind, you look at that and go, so what? But when you re-experience it in rapid transformational therapy and you are that baby crying in the cot, or you are that kid who feels, I'm never going to see my parents again and I'm going to die, (laughs) or everybody's looking at me and laughing at me, I'm so stupid, how could I not know how to spell that word? I thought I had it right. I'm never going to trust myself again. You know, they're big feelings for a child. And the mind wants to protect you from ever going through that again. So it sets up beliefs as protection, right? I'm never going to public speak again. I'm, I'm never going to go out anywhere on my own. I can't, I can't look after myself. I'm helpless. Um, you know, these sorts of things. And you don't even know they're in there. <laughs> and yeah. but we find what I what I find with every client I work with is they've come to a point where this protection they've set up is starting to feel like a prison. It's like a hermit crab crawled into a shell, and it's fine when it's this big. But if you're going to grow, you're going to hit the walls of that shell, and it's going to start to hurt. And that's usually where people come to me at in their life that protective shell has become so constrictive they can barely breathe and Mm -hmm. and it's creating a very strong emotional response yeah so did you find that in yourself that there was something in there that you discovered that you were actually you thought you were protecting yourself but you imprisoned yourself if you can recall absolutely yeah and it for me it was traumatic memories from childhood that had been suppressed but like you said like I was outgrowing that I was I'm a new person now I don't carry the belief systems of my childhood or my religious upbringing specifically Mm. and so realizing if I'm going to do this and if I'm going to if I'm also going to help people and, and be a healer like I need to heal myself first so allowing myself to kind of create new belief systems and your work was a part of that you know realizing what the old belief systems are first and then asking myself okay I'm a clean slate basically (laughs) like who do I want to be now like I can create whatever belief I want and to me like that's that's the exciting part about this work is Mm -hmm. now I can see my cycles as an opportunity of when I do PMS and I go through that phase, there are going to be things that surface that need to be healed. And it's an opportunity to just continue to love myself and to heal those parts and really grow and evolve as a person. So just the change in perspective in such, I mean, in a year is amazing. Wow. 
Yeah, I often refer to that time. It's the thinning of the veil, and it's it's you know if there's anything in that box of pain that's still stuck down there, you're going to find out about it premenstrually, especially if you um, are perhaps going through a more stressful time. And also, as we grow, um, you might have heard this expression: "new level, new devil." And it's good that you have the course because you can go back and do it again. It's not that you've regressed or that you've um, it's worn off or anything like that. You'll always you'll keep growing, but as we grow, what happens is we hit new comfort zones. So that's quite far enough. The mind says, "I'll let you go that far." Yeah. And I found that as um, having my a, a business and being visible on social media that I've or hitting new income levels as well. It's like <gasps> that's enough, and and it'll. It'll push on something you didn't know was there. Um, you know, like if you maybe start to out earn your partner, you didn't know that was even a problem for you until you get there. And then your subconscious mind is going, stop, this is not safe for one reason or another because of a belief in there that you can't see. And you'll just feel it as resistance. So I always say whatever's in the way is showing you the way. That's the next obstacle on the road. Let's get it out of the way and it remind what you just said reminds me of something a Carl Jung quote that says I'm not who I'm not what happened to me I'm who I choose to become that yeah, sounds like really good where you're at now isn't it yeah this yeah um yeah but to be able to use this time as a window into what still needs healing in me where what's what's still um, what's still there and so that you don't fear this time and dread this time but you go forward with curiosity around so what mm -hmm. else what else needs my love and acceptance what other parts of myself have I pushed into the shadows that, that are ready to be reintegrated and I will say in the beginning I was not that positive <laughs> I was very much like I don't care. I don't want to go through this anymore. I'm done. Like I was exhausted and, and it took some time of, like you said, I, I would write, does this person really feel this way about me? I would say, yes, obviously. Like everything I was like, yup, this is really happening. This belief is true. And mm -hmm. it took me like literally like breaking through a hard shell. And it's interesting because my Zodiac sign is a cancer, which is the crab too. Yeah, so I was like soft, really soft, sensitive inside, soft on the inside, very protected on the outside. So like working through all those layers and saying, like, could it be possible that my perspective is different than theirs? And and just opening my mind to seeing both sides of the situation. And like you said, being the observer and being neutral, when I really got that and understood what it meant to be the observer, that really, really changed how I view PMS and I do still get intense like my cycles are still really intense but I'm able to like manage it better now and that's the point I wanted to get to I wanted to be able to not freak out like you know not not reach a point where I'm having life-ending thoughts or I'm doing something drastic or hurting my partner but I'm able to know that I need to give myself a lot more love and care kind of like taking care of a child when I'm PMSing and that's okay. Like that's just how my, my body and my mind works. So just being self, uh, having self-compassion to me is the first step to anything. Yeah. And when I work one-to-one -one with my clients in the beginning, I do um, like a scale. I get them to fill in. It's a self-assessment of all the different symptoms and score them out of 10. Because when we come back at the end of the, of the program of around eight weeks, we fill it in again. And that ability to you know, bring love and compassion to myself when I'm in a negative emotional state is always at like one <laughs> when we begin. Mm -hmm. Like I'm not giving compassion to her, bloody hate her. I just want to get rid of her. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that part of yourself. I just wish I could rip this part out and throw it in the bin. But, you know, hating these parts of ourselves, that's the reason they're screaming at you in the first place is because they've been exiled by you when you were little, when you told yourself, uh, that must mean I'm not good enough. That must mean I'm worthless. That must mean I can't trust myself. They're the main things that I hear. I hear these over and over again. 
these words come out of my clients' mouths. And I'm sure when you did the rapid transformational therapy element of the course, something similar to I'm not good enough probably came out of you as well. Did, mm. did you experience like something like that? Oh, definitely. I mean, fears of nobody loves me and nobody wants to be friends with me and just starting to find like what that root cause of that is. But, mm. but compassion was what I was missing. Like, if you don't love yourself, then you're not going to feed yourself properly when you're PMSing. You're not going to exercise or do yoga or whatever you do to get your body moving. And so not only was I having these negative thoughts, but I also wasn't taking care of my body like physically and it was making the symptoms worse. So it was, yeah, like the, the holistic change of, I need to take care of my physical body and my emotional spiritual, mental bodies as well. Mm. And isn't that amazing? Because see, the more you do that, the more you suffer. And then the suffering wakes you up because you simply cannot go on at that level of suffering. And then you say, right, something has to change. Yeah. Because we don't like to change generally. We like to stick with what's familiar, with what we've always done. And the pain of staying the same has to outweigh the fear or resistance to change and then we change so it's unfortunate that we have to suffer so much before we'll change ourselves but it is often the case um but yeah that that self-rejection and self-abandonment that is actually the light bulb moment for most of my clients that they realize oh it's when I decided about me that I wasn't good enough Here's my love for myself, which you're born with. Very, very few people are born feeling it was a complete mistake for them to be here. Sometimes that happens. Um, I've had clients who've just felt unwanted from the womb and just felt, what am I even coming into the world for? This is a total mistake. I'm a mistake. My existence is wrong. And they can't put their finger on why, but they understand it once they go back. But, but most people are born feeling like, the needs will be met, they're lovable, they're, they are filled with unconditional love, and they think everyone else is unconditionally lovable too. So when they're met with conditional love from a parent, they can't make sense of it, and they have to make it mean there's something, there must be something wrong with me. And it's this self-abandonment and self-rejection that is the real wound. You think it's your parents, but it's actually you losing yourself, and that's what we reconnect. And when you've lost yourself premenstrually, all that pain is going to get a big spotlight on it, um, which is in a way a gift. Eckhart Tolle talks about it in The Power of Now. He has a whole section about females are gonna be the first ones to become enlightened because we keep getting dumped into our pain body every month and then yes. alchemizing that through awareness. Um, so, you know. <laughs> Yeah, that's a beautiful way. Yeah. <laughs> no, I love the way you said that because it's it really is a gift, even though in the moment it's painful, but sometimes the most painful experiences they really make us catalyst to grow. So seeing yeah. it as that is takes a, some time to you know change your perspective, especially in a society where menstruating is seen as something you kind of hide and you mm. and it's a, there's a lot of shame around it and a lot of you know cover up and don't let anyone see it leave early if someone sees it you know and yeah. so just being and, able to embrace it yeah and I think a lot of good changes are coming about now um because you know remember and I it's probably still the case I haven't seen a tv commercial for some time because of the whole <laughs> hbo netflix uh, situation we have now but but remember growing up and there'd be like a carefree tampons commercial and it'd be like beach baby, beach baby there on the sand. Yeah. And there she's running with her surfboard with her flat little belly and like, oh, piss off. Like yeah. that's not what it feels like to have your period, your bust, no. you know. But that's the image we're projecting with. So when you're sitting yeah. there feeling like, I don't want to get out of my bikini and run on the beach right now, you feel like, well, how come I'm not? That, that's, that's something inadequate with me. Um, yeah. And even, you know, where they show pads and they pour the blue liquid on because they don't want to gross people out with the blood. Well, you know, use use red sanitary liquid instead. Come on, 
stop making everyone feel like, oh, can't look at it, sister. Yeah. You know, we can't have humanity without it. So um, we're running a uterus here. <laughs> Not a big deal. <laughs> exactly. exactly. And it's the natural flow of life, you know, like earth has its seasons and it changes. And, and it's really beautiful that the female body or the menstruating body gets to experience that cycle with it. So yeah. changing our perspective. And I think it does take us women, the people who are menstruating to change that narrative too, and to, yeah. to help other women view their periods and their cycle in the same way. So thank yeah. you for being a part of that. Because when I was looking up really intense uh, PMS symptoms, like you were the person who showed up and to see that somebody is in that space, really helping people heal and process their trauma. You know, it's amazing mm -hmm. work that you're doing. So I have a lot of gratitude for you. Thank, Thank you. you. Me all <laughs> yeah, we do have these four seasons and yeah. in what is really a man's world that's run on, you know, if you look at a man, a male cycle, hormonal cycle, which doesn't mm -hmm. really exist. It's a, you know, a testosterone spike in the morning and, and then the same the next day. So if you look at the workplace, it's all based on that. Um, but as you, you know, for, for me, running, having, being able to work for myself, I structure my month, my 28 days, around how I know where my cycle is. I honour it. I go, there's four seasons here. Um, there's, the sun, there's the spring. There's the summer. And so those first two weeks, um, things are a lot busier. Things, I do a lot more therapy work. Um, I, I don't need as many rest days off. But come autumn and winter um, of the cycle, and you know what I'm, I guess this makes sense when I'm talking, you know, when things, and you can even see the parallels with nature. You know, in the summer, you're all like, <laughs> feeling sexy the fruits hanging right from the tree like that's how you feel in the spring you feel a bit more like you want to come out of yourself oh buds coming on the tree and yeah I might go to that party after all whereas by autumn you sort of like I think I might just come back inside and have a nice hot chocolate now and the winter you want to be snuggled under your doona and sleep in you can see that happens within one month with us and if you don't honor that and you just push through winter going well come on produce fruit <laughs> you wouldn't do that with a tree so right. why do it with yourself so it's really about honoring those different phases and and harnessing them for their benefits yeah yeah they all have their purpose and rest has its purpose too definitely yeah we need to recover like our bodies are doing a lot <laughs> We should allow them to rest and allow them to kind of integrate the lessons and what we've learned during those like warmer seasons of our cycle. Yeah, yeah, exactly right. Mm. Sorry. What else? Anything else? <laughs> <laughs> well, if there's anything else you want to share before we kind of wrap up? Um, um, well, I have a book, actually. It's not like a book that it's out on Amazon or anything like that at this point. Maybe one day. But I have a book that has that is filled with all the stories of clients and they've written the stories themselves or their testimonials as their own journey. And you're welcome to write your story if you want to add it to the book. I'm adding to it all the time. Um, I think so. I'd like to I'll probably give you the link to it so that it's free. Um, if there's anyone who wants to read more about what this is all about and Reading every, every woman's story, I think, is a very good way to see, oh, okay, she started out with this. She, it was the root cause of stuff was this from her childhood, and now she's free of it and able to do everything she couldn't do before. There's just one hero's journey after the other in this book, each, each with their own box of pain, their own thing they needed to overcome, their own unique background. But you'll see it's the same principle every time. Yeah, but otherwise you can find me on Instagram at Natalie Ryan Hebert. You can find the spelling somewhere in this <laughs> down below somewhere. <laughs> you um, definitely said it wrong. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, don't oh, worry. It's, the description. it's one of those last names that's difficult to know how to spell it. Even the bank Mine spells it wrong and puts, <laughs> calls it Herbert instead of Hebert. So no, I'm used to it. <laughs> 
Um, yeah, I'm on Instagram and my website. I guess you'll pop all that down below so people can yeah. find a bit more if they're interested in learning a bit more about what rapid yeah. transformational therapy is all about. But yeah, but otherwise, thank you so much for giving me a little platform to stand on <laughs> and to get my message out there to even more people. Thank you. Yeah, I really appreciate you. I, I feel like this call and this podcast has really helped me to just to remind me I'm thinking now of all the work I've done and like I'm wanting to go back and reflect now on, on like my journal entries and stuff so it's it's yeah. really amazing work and anyone watching this who's interested if you think you might have PMDD and you want to learn more about it check out her website she has the whole healed woman course which is what I did and then is the other one the red tent program red tent program yeah that's why yeah, so it's a longer one too one-to-one -one with either me or my lead therapist Chloe um yeah and there's online work too but there's and there's weekly group calls with the red tent program as well with so that you can yeah be there with the other women who are going through the program um so there's two options one is more expensive obviously because there's a lot more you know high touch and interaction and one-to-one -one work but both are effective you know um as you can here's one we prepared earlier natalie over here mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much. It was amazing talking to you, fellow Natalie. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Natalie.